I'm Lynette Beaver. I'm from the Arkansas-Louisiana Conference, and I've been the Prayer Ministries Coordinator for two and a half years. I worked with the Prayer Ministries Coordinator previous to me for about four and a half years. We have an awesome team that goes uh, to do different things. When Marion Parson, and some of you may know her, she was my mentor before me, and I have learned a lot from her, but she is an amazing woman. She decided to retire, which she retired from traveling, but not from ministry, because she works in ministry of our church a lot. But um, when she was doing it, they were doing a couple of retreats a year, and as the days go by, less and less people were able to do that. And we know that it's important to take it to the local churches. So before she left, she got me involved in it too, and we, once a month, go to, our team goes to a local church, and we do a prayer retreat at the local church. Um, we, we travel all around the conference and do this. We, set, we work with the pastors and the prayer coordinators of the church. It's very important to work with pastors. I love what she said, to get, get the pastors involved. Because if you don't have the pastors on board, you don't have the church on board. That's right. And we need, we need the pastors to be involved. And I have the privilege, my conference appointed my pastor um, as the associate to the prayer ministries coordinator. And he travels with me because we are blessed with an associate pastor at our church. And he travels with me and does some of the speaking. We tag team all weekend. We do a Friday night session and then we go into all day Sabbath. <laughs> Sabbath school church. We change the venue of the normal church service when we're there for that weekend. We give them a break. We take over and we do the music. We do the whole thing. Wow. And they love it. So they're involved in that. It's a really, really awesome thing. But it's an interactive thing. We don't go there and just uh, teach. And we don't go there and just preach at them. We, we involve them in... Kind of like what we were doing the other night here. It was just amazing program. I love this program. It's awesome. Involving the people with it. And then once a year we have an annual team prayer conference that we do at our beautiful camp. You notice somebody said something about their beautiful camp. We have an awesome one at Camp Yorktown Bay. And it is a beautiful camp. We take the kids down there, the teenagers from, from ages 13 through college age, and we have a weekend of prayer with them. We usually bring in a speaker, and then we have different prayer activities that we do. When I first come on board, I talked to some of the kids about this, and I said, what, what do you get from all of this? And they said, well, Lynette, I'm going to be honest with you. We want to change, because they call this a prayer conference, but we don't pray. Mm -hmm. So we changed that the last couple of years. We've had a lot of prayer going on in small groups and in individuals, and, and it's a blessing to see these kids throughout the the campus just stop and pray mm -hmm. yeah. and it's an amazing thing so that's something we're doing and we have prayer activities at each session kind of like we did this weekend and it's just an awesome thing to be a part of that and when you get them down there there's no cell phone service mm -hmm. so the only wireless connection that's open is to God and it's Amen. awesome Amen. 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 Excellent. I want to hold that one there. Keys to a good camp. Um, Stephen Rowan did an excellent job with this weekend um, just just facilitating and keeping us moving, um, applauding the Philam Church and mm -hmm. Howard for working with them and um, Brother Jason, Dr. Jason, you know, do that. I want, want, want to talk a little bit about the resources that we need to, to see from NAD, Diane is here, Deborah is here, um, we're listing these things. What are some resources that we can, can see if we can put in place based upon what we heard this past weekend, based upon what we what we experienced this past week, what are some resources? We've got around five minutes left um, for this this talk time. Let's let's just throw out some ideas. As far, maybe they're not all developed as of yet, but what are some resources that we need in our local areas? We're going to contextualize it to that particular area. I got a hand right here. You, 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 you. <laughs> I'm like everywhere. Yes, go ahead. Um, and I'm not sure if this is what you're talking about, but maybe I better. Come on, come on, quickly, come on, because we have five minutes. All right. Look, look we the used um, the 40 days of prayer with Dennis Smith mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. of the second coming. But when we did that, what we did was every person every night would have a prayer partner. Mm -hmm. And when I was in a, a different um, church location, there was a woman that was one foot in the church, one foot out of the church. And we didn't know how to reach her. Mm -hmm because her husband actually was the head elder and we didn't want to blow him away. My husband didn't want to 
preach sermons that would be too hard. So I became her prayer partner, and I never said a word to her, but I gave testimonies every single night. We were on the prayer, we were on the phone for an hour and within prayer and testimonies of just how God had worked in my life. And slowly everything faded away. She is now such an well, we're best friends, but she is such an incredible leader now in the church and totally grounded and just loves being there. Good. Resources, so, resources, excellent resources, resources. Go ahead, come on. Well, I'm from the Pacific Union, <clears throat> and we've been working for several years on resources for prayer ministry. And we have a CD, we have lots of brochures, booklets, um, some pamphlets, and a lot of bookmarks we make. Um, I feel people need visuals, mm -hmm. and uh, so we have developed a lot of different kinds of bookmarks with uh, the purpose on the front, like um, praying for forgiveness, and on the back, you know, columns to little lines to people that I need to forgive, and going through that process, and then a, a prayer place they can pray for forgiveness. And uh, different things like that we have on our on our website. We and that a, website is? It's, well, it's not actually the website. It's the NAD website. It's on, has okay, so everything's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah the things so are there. So when we look, though, Karen, when we look, yes. how would... You go to resources. No, um, what, what I'm going to share with you, and I don't know if it's... Well, oh, just talk, okay, that's not it. Go ahead. What you say? If you go to our website, nadprayerministries.org, and go to resources, you're going to see a lot of what Karen has put given to us, and it's out there. And if you have things that you use in your ministry that can be shared by other people, because I get emails from different churches that they uh, somebody's been nominated to be their prayer coordinator for the church, and where do we start? Mm -hmm. So I point them there and say, these are resources that you can use. Okay, yeah. okay. We started, there was nothing. Um, the, other, the other thing I have here, and I don't know, am I... Um, James, James, no, James, had, James had asked me to, to share some of what we were doing in the Pacific Union, so I don't know if this is a point to do that. I should, I should do it later. But I just want to do it really quick. You heard from Jan, and I know Joyce. I have five, um, five conferences in my union, and I also do Southeastern California Conference Prayer Ministries. And the thing that I have learned in the years that I have been doing this ministry is working with pastors, A. You can't do the work without the pastors. Right. You can't come in and have a program right. and then um, have the pastors take off for the weekend. It just does not work. But your pastors have to have buy-in. And the other thing I've learned is that if you do a prayer conference in your church or in, um, in the churches in your conference, you have exposed more people to prayer ministry than you would have exposed if they come to a retreat. Retreats happen when prayer leaders come and they bring their prayer teams, basically. And uh, you know a few other people, they're interested in prayer. But I want to get prayer where people are. Yeah, right. And this, um, this is so exciting to me because my conference president has asked to specifically work with me. I developed a strategy uh, with my prayer team for the Southeastern California Conference. I want to ask Joyce, and if you would take some of these and just pass them out. But what you want to do, if you're in a church and a prayer coordinator in your church, you want to work with your pastor, you want to develop a strategy without a plan. You can always plan for a, a prayer conference, but you've got to have, you've got to have the, the discipling in the whole thing. And I am a 100% discipler. Um, I truly believe in discipler. And the one thing I learned is uh, that people need to be taught how to, um, not necessarily how to pray, but how to develop the prayer ministry in their churches. How to teach people prayer manners, um, prayer etiquette. I mean, there are some people that will take over everything. And so one of my burdens now is that we teach our people in our churches different ways that they can pray, different ways that they can bring prayer into activities without even people knowing that it's there. I mean, you can do things a thousand different ways and how to bless. Ways that your congregation can learn about prayer is, is hugely important. But we disciple them so they can learn to bless someone Amen. in the congregation. Then they go out and they bless. And this is one of my, my passions is bringing a blessing to people. I love blessings. And, um, but, but when you teach it in your church and you have the congregation bless your pastor and then you have your pastor bless your congregation, there is no dry eye in the whole congregation. It's powerful. We're having a prayer conference at Loma Linda University Church, you know, within just a minute, at Loma Linda University Church um, in May, and I want to tell you it starts with a national day of prayer, and it goes through the weekend. Eric Morris is the speaker. We have a membership there of 6,000 people. 
If I were to reserve all my resources, which are very little, we get very little for prayer ministry, uh, for a prayer conference, I would have probably 150, 200 people at my prayer conference, and it would be all people who are into prayer. It's not, it's not your ordinary everyday Joe. So this way we expose it to people, they come up afterwards and they're amazed. We finish with an anointing service on Sabbath afternoon, and I will not do a prayer conference without an anointing service in the evening. The people are starving for it. Let me tell you, they're starving. They line up at the doors for it. Um, I've never seen anything like it in my life. As a pastor's wife, I have learned something immense, that our people are desperate to take their problems to God and to be anointed for the ministries that we empower them to do. And this, this is just a part of my strategy for, for meeting the needs of Southeastern California Conference. And it's teaching and equipping the people in our congregations with prayer ministry and all the ways that we're going to do it. We're going to, um, I have a prayer ministry advisory team. I have some goals on there and roles. But we want to collaborate with relationships in the church members, um, with the church members. We want a prayer ministry cross values, generational and multicultural ministries and seeks leadership and engagement. So again... Good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. She, 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 she just had to come up here and speak. We've got a couple more seconds to go. Go ahead. Okay, um, my name is Esther Paul Emil. I am the prayer coordinator for, for the Creme Conference. And also, I'm a pastor. I'm leading a church. So, we had Karen two weeks ago, uh, no, two years ago, because I was the prayer coordinator. She did a very, very good job in my prayer. Thank you very much. So we have a problem in Quebec. I'm a French speaking. <laughs> so the thing about it, we don't have enough materials in French. So in order, because when we receive the material in English, so we need to work on it and translate in French. And it takes a lot of time. So my request, can we have something in French for us? Because in Quebec, people really they love to pray because we, we have over 54 churches and groups. So we have prayer vision and we have prayer like, um, some churches they have prayer vision every month. And on Wednesday we have prayer and on Tuesday they have prayer and fasting and anything. So we don't have enough French material, so can you help us please? Diane, did you hear that? Yes, I don't have anything in French on our website. We do have some Spanish things, but... Um, How about us? <laughs> so I, we are a lot. So. I need... What I have on the website is what people have shared with us. So if you have French or Spanish or any other language uh, materials, send them to me and I'll put them on the website. How can we partner with, with, with resources from the NAD, with translators? They can do the work. We can empower them to do the work. Um, but they're going to need some of the resources from a financial standpoint to be able to go ahead and take some of those things and then get them over to Diane so that they can then be shared with other individuals that are French speaking. Is it Creole or is it, is it French? French. 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 Oh, James, James is listening. Thanks for listening. Okay, all right, all right, very uh, good. And we have processes at the division where we have translations. But we have a, a queue because <laughs> every resource in the church needs to be translated. Oh, yeah. um, but we hear you. Amen. Thank you very much. Good, good. Thank you for bringing it. Yes. So I was going to say, I'm in the process right now of kind of developing some, some PowerPoints and different things to teach people. Um, one, Jim Moon had came up with one on how to work with the prayer leaders in your church, your prayer teams, so that they know how to meet and greet people, how to pray with people, and how to, how to approach them, and, uh, and just, just the, the etiquette and the behavior so that people aren't turned off by prayer leaders. That's awesome. Those kinds of things. Last, last, last couple words, last couple words. I see, yes, go ahead. You got it. Oh, not a call, something else. Something else, okay, all right. You got last, last words, last words. Just a question. Go ahead, question. Where can we find some of your materials? You um, if you just give me a call, I will. We'll, we'll let you know, yeah. But they can just go, unless you've got new stuff that you haven't sent me yet. No, not really. I mean, I, ha I have some things, but they're not quite refined yet, but I do have some yeah. things, but and I'm happy if they call me and I can work on some stuff to get for them. Let's spread, let's, let's spread the word that this resource 
Diane, give us that 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 um, um, website again. NAV Prayer Ministries at uh, dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. And the <clears throat> email address to, to me is NAD Prayer Ministries at gmail dot com. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. You can go to that. We can um, send our church members to that. We can send our prayer coordinators to that, and that can be shared. Okay. All right. Um, Yes, yes, yes. We've got to, we've got, we've got to move because he's, he's giving me that eye. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Um, Kalila from Ontario. Uh, he needs to hear. Okay. Daddy keeps telling me to say this, so I'm coming up really quickly. Okay, Daddy keeps telling me to say this. So, Kalila from Ontario. Hi, JV. Um, so, one of the things that we've been doing when we have the convention is, when we have a youth convention, because I work with youth and young adults, is we have now started to implement a compassion prayer room so no matter what's happening no matter what area we will build a small little um, altar with some prayer signs like you saw last uh, at um, Phil Ann along with some candles or things like that one of the other things that we've implemented is prayer cards so at the back so at the front of it we'll see a scripture but on the back of it it's the beginning of a prayer for them and then they can fi fill it out and finish it we keep the prayer cards so they'll visually see them compiling. We keep them in a box. So every event, there's more and more boxes or more and more cards being filled in the box so that they know that they're continuously being prayed over. So even if they had something of like five months ago or from our camp meeting the year before, they still see their cards and know that they're being prayed over. And the other thing is some of you guys were wearing that little white um, thing that said, can I pray with you? Those are actual buttons. So all of these resources will be going to Diane so that you guys can um, have them for, for you. But those are some of the things that we're doing. And what I've learned is now that we've taught them how to create a prayer room anywhere, our challenge now is create a prayer room or a prayer area in your church. Because the one thing that we don't have is that particular place to feel like you can go to daddy. So. Thank you. Trying to get back into Elder Howard and Diane and, and Sister Brill's hand. They can, can do as they, they need to um, address any other additional names. Thank you so much. Bless by. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Those who I didn't speak to, I haven't spoken to. That was a great session, great session. And I know we could have probably spent another hour with that, but we're not done it because, believe me, uh, a lot of things that you have expressed and, and the desires of your heart as we kind of flip through some of the slides uh, we will revisit some of these things and then move right back into a, a listening note just to kind of set a stage as to how we want to try to do this so we can stay on task and get folk out and catch the airports and stuff and i'm at home i just need to go home and get some sleep <laughs> we're still going to tag team i'm thankful for uh, uh, deborah grill who's uh, our vice president of our church ministries to allow us to kind of speak on behalf a little bit of, of, of James and then glean this information. I want to go back to a slide, and then when I go back to the slide, I want to just acknowledge Steve once again, uh, who also, I believe, is James, uh, in fact, I know he's James' right-hand person, too. Uh, you'll find as he begins to speak now a little differently uh, with us today, uh, that, that he's, believe me, he's, he's, he's just filled with uh, resources and, and, and understanding of, of what this thing is all about. So we're just in a listening mode. We want to hear from you. Uh, no comment uh, will be denied, so feel free to do that. Uh, but we want to do our best to kind of stay with some of the time frames so we can kind of cover some of the topics so Pastor Black can hear what he says. Uh, I just want to re reiterate, he says he want to hear from you, so, so please share with us. And uh, his, his words are, he wanted me to express with you this morning. He woke me up at 6.30, he says, hey, I want to express these three points, that uh, he's not going anywhere without you without you. And then number three, uh, if it takes 95% of whatever we need to talk about, take your time and let's glean that information out. Um, so let's go. Brief perspective. Again, again, uh, let's, let's make sure we, we, we're clear as to how, how we're going to move through this. I'm going to share some thoughts that I think you already have already seen uh, in some of your sessions, some of your telecommunication sessions. I'm just going to reiterate some of those thoughts. Uh, that, that Pastor Black and you guys have already uh, uh, discussed. And then we'll just quickly jump into a listening mode, and guess what we do? We, we look at that, and then we just add value to it. How about that? Okay? So here we go. 
He says, I, I, I would assume, now I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions because believe me, I'm kind of new to this side of the fence too. Uh, I would assume that at some point you were, you, uh, in, in the previous administration of prayer ministry, you had a uh, theme of houses of hope. The only thing that Pastor Black wanted to add to it, and he's suggesting to us as a, as a prayer ministry, that we just add community. So people understand that this is just not for the church. And guess what? This is for all people. Mm -hmm. We want to go outside the church mm -hmm. and reach all people, yeah. whatever race, whatever color, whatever creed, whatever denomination, whatever tongue, or whatever. We want to go out and reach those people. So that's a community house of hope. Uh, he says best practices, and I think that's important. That's important. That's important mm -hmm. that we guide ourselves through best practices as we reach into the communities in our cities and our states. And then uh, he, he, he says, uh, uh, he says, be light with this. Be light with this. He says he just wants you guys to know that from a, uh, and I'm going to say what a, a denominational employment perspective, uh, he's a, a part-time employee. But on the same on, on the same token, he says, just understand. Don't, don't be, I'm, I'm going to use I'm going to use some language now because you know in cultural thing we have. He says, don't get it twisted. <laughs> That's what he used to be this morning. He says he let them know that he's committed to to, to prayer ministry with you all, 100 percent, 100 percent committed. I'm just kidding. Uh, he also wanted me just kind of speak lightly to it. Uh, he says, well, don't 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 be dismayed or discouraged by uh, sometime uh, his illness. Or he took ill. Uh, he had uh, a schedule or so prior to this engagement, uh, and I think uh, uh, he kind of exerted himself. Uh, we all have had flus. I'm coming out of the flu. My wife can tell you, he caught the flu, and as a result, he had to kind of go get his body back recovered. He's got a wife just like I do, and guess what? Uh, his wife says, Maxine says, nope, you're not flying. And so, <laughs> at that point, so he's okay. He's recovered. I spoke to him this morning. Believe me, been speaking to him all week. So he's okay. We want you to realize he's with you. He's going to be with you. And uh, what we need to do is just kind of help surround him to help protect his health so he can be with us more. How about that? Uh, learning and listening. He says right now, he says, hey, until, until you guys are ready to say we have defined some things, he said, let's just stay in a learning and, and listening mode uh, as we kind of grow together and, and continue to develop. And then uh, uh, let's see that the church uh, become fully engaged. And I've heard a little bit at today that uh, we want to extend out now and, and come out of the small group uh, type thing, and come out of the pastoral type things, and, and believe me, have this leadership with us, but extend out and, and get everybody fully engaged. And then we'd like to see this church, like to see this church uh, with a strong and valuable prayer ministry. And I think you heard me say yesterday a lot that uh, he says when people come up to you and, and they find out that you are a Seventh-day Adventist, he want, he want people to recognize that you are a church and what that you are, that we are in praying church, we are in praying church. So those are the things that uh, I, I, you know, I took from him and, and I think you guys have kind of uh, reiterated those things and talked about those things. So now, I now kind of move us into a listening mode and, and let's see what you think about that, what you want to add to that, what kind of thoughts you have on your mind about that. And uh, it's being recorded, my wife is kind of recording it in, in, on, on, on paper. And guess what, we're just going to begin to just talk and, and take these things back. Anybody? 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 Yes. Thank you, Paulette. Uh, Michael again, Northern New England Conference. I just, there was a young man that was here that has already had to leave. His name was Josh. He was from the Chesapeake Bay Conference. And uh, Karen, you were talking about discipleship. One of the things that Josh shared with me while I was here at the conference was how He's been leading in prayer in his church, or even churches, I see some nodding back there, so some ladies know, but they've been doing, um, following a, um, a philosophy of triad groups, of taking three people together in prayer, and allowing those people to pray together for three months, or two months, and then bringing on, finding someone else and inviting them into that group, so it's four people, praying for another month, and then dividing the group into two pairs, and each set of two pairs going out and finding a third person to create another triad. And he was talking about how God has taken their church, I believe from about 30 people to 100 people, yeah. in a fairly short period of time with several baptisms, mm -hmm. and that they're really using this method of discipleship in prayer to reach out to individuals, because 
I just, I mean, I think we all know from experience, you can make an announcement about prayer. Hey guys, we're having a prayer group. We'd love to have you come join. How many people do you usually get? Yeah, sometimes a negative number, you know? But if you go out and you say to somebody that you know, that you have a relationship with, hey, you know what? We're doing this prayer thing. We've been having powerful experiences. Really like you to join. You know, would you would you like to come pray with us? You know, you almost bat a hundred when it comes to or, well, I don't know baseball very well. Thousand. A thousand, thank you. Only bat a thousand. You don't want to bat a thousand. Not a sports guy, so a baseball bat in here. But uh, I mean, your your success rate with bringing on someone new into an experience is much higher. So that's just I want to share that. Please forgive me for not addressing everybody about the first thing I'm getting to learn you, so if I just kind of <laughs> pass your mic. <laughs> My name is Linda Tidell, and um, I'm from LMI Conference. I'm one of the conference area prayer coordinators here. And I just wanted to address the part that uh, Elder Bryant brought out about the community houses of hope. Um, community is what it's about. That's what we're here for, is to reach out to the people. At our church in uh, Parkview, uh, Galesburg Church, uh, we have a clothing giveaway. Uh, we are on our fourth year of this, where we are open every, uh, every third Thursday of the month for the community to come and receive clothing. We've also added uh, food now to that, um, where it's free of charge. We charge nothing. It's, they come and they take as much as they can use. And it's grown so much that these dear people, the returning ones that come almost every month, they're bringing us clothing now, things that they don't need. But my point in this is that we give them opportunity. We try to, each one that come, we try to say, uh, is there anything we can pray for you for? And so we connect with them through prayer. And there's this one experience, I didn't have, personally have it, but one of the ladies that helps us from time to time, um, this lady went through, got a thing, and she went to leave, and, and she stopped, and she says, why aren't you going to pray with me? Because she was used to us, you know, and this particular lady hadn't been so much into the prayer part, but... Hold your thoughts. I, I, I see a couple of people for the leaves, so guess what we're going to do? We're just going to pause we'll people Amen. and just pray for their safety. Can we do that? Can yeah. we do that? I just want to pray for you guys before you leave. Okay. Loving Lord, we just want to pray here. We have some folk that's been head back, and we're thankful for their presence and, Amen. and what God has done in this place uh, over this weekend. The Lord, give them traveling mercies yes. back to their place where they're headed. And then, Lord, when uh, they dispatch back, we ask that you would help them launch into the deep mm -hmm. and make disciples for Jesus. This Amen. we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyway, what I wanted to share is that you just, uh, prayer. It just needs to be there, every opportunity. Uh, just to give you a personal experience, um, I was in Walmart, and I ran across a, a lady that I knew, and she started sharing with me some issues and problems that she felt was in the church that she was attending. And I said, well, let, let's pray. So we just stopped there in the aisle, uh, which I've been known to do in Walmart, and just I started praying with her. And as we finished, there was a young man in a wheelchair sitting right next to us and he said i hope you don't mind but he said as i approached you i felt the holy spirit and i just wow. stopped and joined you in prayer Amen. and wow. i said you're not at all that's awesome Amen. wonderful Amen. so you just you know be open to the spirit because mm -hmm. um mm. it could be in the walmart aisle or mm -hmm. no. lot, wherever you know no. god is there and he wants to lead us that lead us to lead people to prayer. Amen. One other quick um, thing. I we, we just have a new uh, vibrant 26-year-old girl that has taken uh, the position of women's uh, ministries leader in our church. And she wanted to have a prayer brunch. Well, she wanted to have it in March. And my husband and I were gone just, just before we came here two weeks to Arizona. And and she, she texts me and she said, would, would would you be offended if I had this while you were gone? <laughs> I'm like, no, just because I'm prayer coordinator, because I'm also prayer coordinator of our local church, as well as one of the conference areas. I said, no, I said, my job isn't to have all these things. My job is to equip you and help you to have this. That's wonderful. Well, then I get a text from her later. She goes, you know, 
I just don't want to push this thing through so quickly. I want to wait. I want you to be a part of it. So we're going to have that April 8th. But you know, I just, uh, I don't have to encourage him preaching to the choir, but um, God is there and wherever the opportunity opens, you know, we, you know, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We shouldn't be ashamed of prayer. I don't care if it's in the middle of a Walmart because uh, I was just, I think God sent that man, that young man Amen. in the wheelchair just to say, you know, Keep them. this is what we need to do. Amen. You know, whenever. So, uh, God bless each one of you ministers. Amen. Amen. I see that one that says learning and listening mode, desires to hear the many things happening around the division, so I thought I'd share a few things that are happening. Like I'm from, I'm Joyce Mulligan, and I'm from the Central California Conference. And I actually was mentored by Janet Page for 15 and a half years. And when, when she left, she and Jerry went to the <clears throat> general conference. I had no idea that they were going to ask me to, be, to take her place. And when the conference president called me to his office and asked me if I would, I said, you've got to be kidding. Nobody can take her place. Mm -hmm. But I said, I won't tell you right now. I, won't, I can't tell you right now. But I will pray about it. Mm -hmm. and so the day that I really needed to call him and give him an answer, I still didn't know whether I was going to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. And I said, OK, God, you've got to tell me what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I opened my Bible and turned some pages, and it turned to Exodus 33, 14, mm -hmm. and it says, my presence will go with you. Mm -hmm. So I made a deal with God. <laughs> I said, okay, God, I will say yes, but you've got to keep your promise Amen. that your presence will go mm -hmm. with me. Amen. So everything I do, everything in our conference, we pray a lot about I have a prayer committee. I'm prayer ministry and women's ministry director. Wow. And actually our women's ministry retreat is a lot like a prayer conference. <laughs> it's, we have an anointing. We have a prayer letter. Every woman gets a prayer letter that people are praying for her. And um, we have prayer like at the tables. I mean, God is, when you ask God what he wants you to do, it's amazing. And with prayer ministry, I want to start out by telling you one illustration about what happened with one of our prayer coordinators. It was not even that long ago, and this prayer coordinator came up to me and he said, I have a hard time with faith. I, I see Jesus used to heal people in the Bible and he doesn't heal them now, and I, I want my wife to be healed and he doesn't answer that prayer. And, and nothing seems to happen. I said, okay, uh, meet me at your church at 9 o'clock, and we are going to go prayer walking through the church, and, uh, and we'll see what happens. Mm. So he met me at the church at 9 o'clock. We started walking through the church and praying through everything. We went up and down the aisles and prayed that people... You know, for everyone that would come to church and prayed for people to look at the sign out in front of a church mm -hmm. and come in. Wow. About 20 minutes later, a lady walked in the church, and I'd never seen her before. And he hadn't seen her before. I said, how, where did, how did you happen to come into the church? You know, I found out she was a visitor. How did you happen to come? She said, I saw that sign in front of the church. Yes. So I said, now do you believe? Do you believe God answers prayer? <laughs> then the next week, I had him meet me at the church. And we prayed that that lady would come back. And five minutes later, she came back. Amen. <laughs> and God really does answer yes. prayer. Amen. One of the, I, that we have so much going on in our conference, I have to narrow it down to just a few things. I want to talk about camp meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to tell you that Janet started a lot of things in our conference with prayer. Mm -hmm. And when I took over, 
I have continued doing things the same way that she has, but added to it. I got it, and it hasn't been me. It's because of a lot of prayer that God has impressed me to add things. This last camp meeting, we wanted to know what God wanted us to do. Because it seemed like a camp meeting before prayer was mentioned, but it wasn't mentioned as much as it had previously. So we started at the beginning of the previous camp meeting and began to pray, God, please show us what you want. We want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and and, and we want revival in our in our conference. Mm -hmm. And when I pray for our conference, I don't just pray for our conference. I pray for everybody's conference. I, it shouldn't be just, you know, that we're just thinking about our own conference. No. And I prayed and we prayed and I set my, um, my cell phone for every hour to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and for revival and for God to show us what he wanted us to do at camp meeting. Have you seen those Bible promises? <laughs> I don't have one with me, and I'm, I'm sorry because I, I left in such a hurry, I totally forgot to bring them. But these little Bible promise cards that have a picture on the front, mm -hmm. uh, okay, they, they discontinued them. In fact, that company went out of business. And when I was praying, I was very impressed to go to the internet and to search and see if maybe they had started uh, selling them again. Well, another company is now making those. So I said, okay, God, you're impressing me to take these to camp meeting. How many should I get? And my own thought was get 3,000 of them. But it felt like the Holy Spirit was saying get 15,000 of them. Amen. And I thought, what? In fact, I argued. It was like I was arguing with God. <laughs> it was like, okay, but I didn't know it. I thought maybe it was just a crazy idea that came in my head. <laughs> well, I said, okay, you win. I'm ordering 15,000 of them. Well, the first night at camp meeting, I, they had me have a, like a 15-minute slot where we prayed and also told about what, prayer, what we were doing at camp meeting with prayer ministry. Okay. Um, I mentioned to them about the cards, the Bible promise cards, and I said, every one of you is going to get one of these. And I mentioned also about how people, how Ellen White talks about going, people going around and praying in little circles mm -hmm. at camp meeting. Mm -hmm. I said, take one of these, take some of these cards, and I said, you can get them, all, you can get them, they're available at our prayer ministry booth. So they started taking them, and I took them around to the kids' divisions. And the kids had baskets, and they went around camp meeting, taking these prayer cards to everybody and praying with people. It was amazing. It was, it was like God answered our prayer. And we have a lot at camp meeting. We pray with people when they come in. Um, we have a prayer room and a children's prayer room. We go around and uh, probably everything you guys do. I and go around and pray with every division. And uh, people go up and down the aisles and pray every day. I have two pastors that are are have they uh, that are with me at at camp meeting that the conference delegates to me. So they praise the Lord <laughs> that they are really great helpers. And then I hire two young adults because I want the youth and the young adults to also be included. So I hire two young adults to go around to these divisions and bring them into prayer ministry so that everybody in the campground is involved with prayer ministry. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not stopping. Yeah, I know. No, 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 I'm not stopping you. Sometimes I have a hard job, so I gotta have a hard job. So here's what we need to do. We're gonna let you continue. You, you continue. But what we need to do, we have a lot of data that we want to show you. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we want you to hold on, hold on. We want to take. We want, we want you to be, be able to take that data back with you. So everybody, everybody speak. Everybody contribute. But you know, let's see what we can do to kind of make sure that everybody have an opportunity. Yeah, when well, I get started, I keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're passionate about it. Yeah, you're passionate about it. You're passionate about it. Yeah, well, Joyce. 
Yeah. We got no, no, I don't need to watch it. But I want to show, show them this. Okay. Show them a couple of things. Show them a couple okay. of things. Okay. Um, <laughs> we, we have so many things in prayer ministry, it's really hard to talk in five minutes. But we, you know, I was praying about what we could do about bringing everybody into prayer ministry and that they would feel a part of prayer ministry. And every year when I get up in front of everybody at camp meeting, I tell them, prayer ministry is not just a little group of people, but it is a, it's you, your prayer ministry. And this year, um, I connected with some of our other conference workers, and they have helped me come up with this. It's a puzzle, and it says, you are an essential piece of CCC prayer ministries. And so everybody's going to get one of those with this, a puzzle. This is a little pin. It's just a little pin that says my prayer, huh. which basically should be the piece that goes in this empty spot here. And um, we're also going to give them um, these armbands and also keychains that say the same thing. And we also have this. These buttons. How can I pray for you? Buttons? <laughs> you want me to stop it? No, right? no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta be honest. We... <laughs> I know you're honest. <laughs> but I'm being honest with you we too. We have to stop. <laughs> I think you better to that. No, we just got through with the prayer conference. Okay, with we had about 800 to 1,000 people that attended, and God, Wesley Knight. Have you ever heard of him? Anyway, he's off. Anyway, I had the kids perform. There were people from all ages. And I guess what I'm trying to say is we're trying to include everybody from every age. And um, make, make, yeah, and we want unity in our conference more than anything else. But her prayer conference was at the academy where people have a bigger church. You have more people that come automatically whether they want to go to the prayer conference. And then you include everybody from all different ages, um, little kids and everything. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> I can't control this woman. I'm not the only one. <laughs> She's great, though. She's great. I get. I get. Oh, 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 wait a minute. See, see, we're getting, we're getting to know one another. Yeah. We get to know one another. We will learn how to take care of those two kids. <laughs> we get to know one another. Now I'm gonna flip the chart. I'm gonna flip the slide. But, but if there is a sentence that we need to catch before I flip the side, uh, just just say that sentence out on something you see and it'll, it'll be recorded. Anybody want to have a sentence that you want to just catch before I flip? Okay, go ahead. See the church. speak loud fully, because she did it. Uh, see the church as being fully engaged with their community. Okay, all right, okay. Fully engaged. Anybody else? Why flip? Going once. Why flip? Why flip? Oh, I thought I was sorry. Okay. We're going to flip through this one pretty quickly, uh, not because uh, it's urgent. Uh, we just, uh, 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 Pastor Vanny on Griffin, you saw him and you heard him yesterday, didn't you? Did you hear him yesterday? He, saw him. he was a speaker who kind of stepped in the gap for uh, Pastor Black, and uh, he sent some things to me this morning. So I'm just going to highlight just two or three of those points so you can kind of see where his, uh, his, his, his mindset is going. And then I'm looking at uh, uh, Pastor Moody right there, who basically works very uh, extensively and hard with that youth and young adult group. Uh, and if you want to add some value to that, I'm going to toss it. He's, he's told me two things, so come close. Uh, and uh, uh, he's going to add a couple of value things to that. Steve may uh, add a couple of items to that. And then, of course, we're going to glean from you so we can take this data back to Pastor Griffith. Okay? So I'm going to flip through it quickly. All right? Uh, the first thing is, uh, for those that may or may not be familiar with uh, advisories, uh, he want to establish a two prey advisory that come alongside the other Y packet. I'm going to use a term. If you're not familiar with that term, I can explain it to you in the Youth and Young Adult Ministry. I'm going to toss it to Deborah for just a second, and she's probably going to give you just a little background as to what an advisory is versus a, a focus group, possibly, and then a town hall, which is what this is. So you can kind of understand how the organization works when it comes down to ministry. Well, this town hall is very kind of unusual. We don't have too many town halls. Mm. We usually have either a committee or an advisory. Mm. So you all know what a committee is, but let me define it in terms of the North American Division. A committee is something that has terms of reference. 
In other words, it has authority. We're not a committee today. We don't have any authority except what our local group gives us to do. Uh, but an advisory is when we come together to share like this, so this is kind of a morphing of a town hall and a, an advisory, but an advisory is something that James is setting up for prayer ministries, is my understanding. Uh, with, and this is my understanding, I could be wrong, but I believe that his advisory is made up of the union coordinators. Karen, are you a member of that? Is there anybody else who is a member of the coordinator advisory for prayer ministries? I'm just representing Frank. Okay. Oh, yes. From Columbia Union. Okay. My body. Yes. Southwestern. Anybody here from uh, Columbia? Okay, that's Columbia, Frank. Columbia. Is. Um, what? Okay, yes. Are you on the advisory? <coughs> okay. The advisory. Oh, let me go. My glasses. So, generally, the, um, there's one member from a union, from every union, and sometimes there's someone like Elvis Pastor Moody, who is the, um, uh, on the staff of the, of the Southwestern Union, or sometimes, and, and Frank Bondurant, Elder Bondurant is, and you're representing him today. Uh, Karen is the prayer minister's coordinator who has been assigned by the union to represent prayer ministries. So, is there various configurations? I'm not sure what Atlantic Union has. Um, the president's wife, Yvonne. Yvonne, okay. So they're, they're often assigned by the union. Yes. Uh, and, but that's the advisory. Now, if James would choose to have his advisory become a committee, then that, those committee terms of reference what authority does that committee have? What does it do? And um, then it goes, and who the names are of the members, and then it goes to the North American Division Executive Committee to be voted. So that's the difference. But right now, for James, as he's in listening mode, uh, he's, he feels that the advisory is the best way to go for, the, for this ministry. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the prayer ministry, uh, on, the, on the youth and young love side, Pastor uh, uh, Griffin will establish a two pray uh, prayer advisor. That's the first step. That's the first step, which is very important. When uh, Pastor Blake heard that, he says, thank God, because that's going to set the stage for what happens with youth and young adults. We don't want to lose them, do we? No. Because, no. you know, we're getting old, so we don't want to use them. Um, I don't understand, um, Pastor Griffin, being the, he's the point person there. Yes, Pastor Griffin, uh, there is, oh, let, me, let me talk to that. <laughs> Let me talk to that. Yeah, you need okay, to clarify Andy that. Andy Griffin is the new associate director for Youth and Young Adult Ministries. So he is setting up a separate group that's going to be just the Youth and Young Adult Advisory Group. And he's going to be leading that. On the Youth and Young Adult side, Pastor Black will set up one on the prayer ministry side. Okay, all right? So they're two separate groups, all right? Pastor Griffin says that when this group is established, here is what he's going to shoot to them as a foundational uh, mission. And it will develop and evolve as, 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 as the days go. First off, he says students, but all young people must establish their own pattern of prayer time. That means that that group is now exploring the, the ideas and suggestions of what they need to get to the field to instill in these young people that, guess what, you know, we, we want to pray with you, but you first need to do what? Establish a prayer life for yourself. And then he wanted to use Daniel 6.10 as his foundation. Uh, and in that, you understand that Daniel, he knew the importance of what? Establishing prayer. So we want that group to focus on Daniel 10 and the other scripture that they bring based on the importance of prayer. He says, these students need to understand and to know God is able. So when they're praying, they have the faith to know that when they pray, God is able. <laughs> Number two. The beauty of prayer is that what? God what? God's response. In whose time though? Oh, you're not talking to me. God responds how? In God's time. In God's time. Uh, students need to know that God loves them uh, with no what? Strings attached. That means that, you know, when these young people and even us uh, come to God with our stuff and we have stuff, God still loves us unconditionally with no strings. I'm going to use John 3.16 and 17 as that foundation. 
And then uh, we all know the story well, Daniel 3, 16 and 17. He is able to deliver us from, and then he says, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. Able to deliver us from, dot, 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 whatever your stuff mm -hmm. is. Uh, and but even if even if uh, this is what but even if he does not he want you to know your majesty we will not serve your gods or worship the image of the gold mm -hmm. which these young people need to understand if God doesn't respond in their time we're still not going to do this stuff we're going to trust God so mm -hmm. oh, this is the kind of the foundation that he's going to deliver to that uh, advisory group that as they begin to work together on the youth and young adult side uh, to establish those understandings to now join and partner with Pastor Black as a, as a prayer ministry overall. And then there's a quote there, we'll get this out to you. So now I'm going to toss it here, here for a second because uh, 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 Deborah Brill's got to leave, she's got to catch another plane because she's got to get to another appointment. So uh, he walked out on me. Uh, I was looking for, oh, I'm sorry. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll just say real quick for the young adult piece in the Southwestern Union for Dollar Black. It can't go any further. <laughs> I'm sure you can hear me. But it's okay. no, I'm trying to go for the sake of time. All right. For our young adults, what we've been doing is including them in the public campus ministry piece. When we do the template here, we deal with the acknowledgement of God. So we allow the college students who are working on their PhDs to do the lessons. Like you seen yesterday, they explain the difference in acknowledging God versus evolution. So when other youth and young adults see that, then they say we can take ownership of it. Another piece is we've also provided a prayer meeting on the telephone on a Wednesday night for college students that they can call in for prayer because they're in school and they're stressed out and they're not going to church, et cetera, et cetera. So those are just some quick things that we focus on from a young adult perspective. The youth perspective, we're working on that. You heard Arkansas, Louisiana with the teen conference, et cetera, et cetera. We keep it moving. And that's on your website with the, the prayer conference. I'll give it to her. I'll give it to her so she okay. can post it. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Okay. I moved the slide, but we want to move into listing mode for just a few moments. So if anybody have a sentence or so that you want to push to Pastor uh, uh, Griffin, shout that out so, so he can hear that in terms of what your interests are, what your thoughts are, or what they need to concentrate on the youth and young adult side as they explore that on the youth and young adult side. Anybody? 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. 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 Uh, it's a matter of... It's a matter of our youth owning their Christian experience, is what it's all about. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, yes. I was going to say, the most important thing I see is creating in the local church opportunities for young adults and children to take part in, in prayer times and prayer ministries pieces, uh, naturally from, from cradle roll up to do prayers. And um, our church has the young people doing the introductory, the welcoming prayer and, and other things. Before I toss it in, please confirm that. I believe the Sabbath school aspect of children and youth have now come up under the docket of, of youth and young adult ministry. Am I, am I correct in that? You're integrating. You're, in, you're integrating. Okay, you're integrating. Okay, all right. My observation is that the Adventist prayer movement, which started as a women's movement and has become cross gender, cross multi generational, is now just merged with youth ministry. Amen. Two, two, two separate tracks are finally on the same track now. Amen. All right, all right, all right. This is what we need to hear. This is what we need to hear. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Let's shift over here right quickly to uh, uh, resources and training. We've heard a lot uh, uh, so far. So let's try not to kind of repeat those. We got them captured. Uh, I'm going to toss it here to uh, 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 Steve. Uh, you, you're going to find that Steve is a master at creating resources. And uh, he has a lot of it out there, so I'm going to kind of give it to him in between uh, Deborah and himself. Uh, they're going to kind of guide us through that process to kind of talk about that, glean your resources, what do we need to do, and then the tools that we're using out there to make us a more better effective uh, group in prime ministry.